This is just a partial teardown of a couple of LED lamps and a kind of sort of explanation on why these do what they do or hopefully it explains it to some degree. First off, this is the famous or infamous depending on how you look at it, uh, $50 lamp, although these at one point, Home Cheapo had these on clearance for as cheap as, 50, as 15 bucks a piece, although I was not unfortunately able to get any at that price. Right now, they're about 31 bucks and change. Um, um, two of the three that I have uh, were uh, 29 bucks and change on sale. Um, it has uh, two different types of LEDs in it. The uh, White dye ones, um, these are Luxion Rebel LEDs by the way, are uh, the blue um, you, or blue LEDs using a um, uh, aluminum, um, no, uh, indium gallium nitride dye and the red one and the uh, red dye ones are red um, aluminum indium gallium phosphide dye LEDs. Um, the reason for this is um, twofold. Partly, one means of improving the efficiency of white light LED sources is to use separate daylight color temperature white LEDs and uh, red LEDs because due to the um, energy of the Photons, because the way the um, cerium doped uh, yttrium aluminum gallium, um, pfft, cerium doped um, yttrium aluminum garnet phosphor in these LEDs works, it's mu it's much less efficient to, than because each one photon in equals one photon out for this particular type of phosphor. Um, it's much less efficient for the blue incoming photons to be converted into say red photons. Um, because that energy difference is dissipated as heat in the phosphor. So what they do is they use a, um, I don't know whether or not it's a different mix of phosphor, whether or not there's simply not as much of it. Um, that way more of the light, um, well the blue light gets out and um, of the lamp and um, less is converted into the um, Ooh. Uh, the, um, the the lower energy wavelengths more stays in say the, the, the greens and the yellows. So them so I don't know if there might so there might be some diff uh, varying phosphor. Hang on. Ah! That was a no seam. Um, I might have something to do with the phosphor chemistry, and it's just more efficient to use um, native um, red LEDs to generate those um, lower energy um, photons. Uh, one another interesting thing about this is that the LEDs are actually being driven independently. You can see in there, each uh, there's some FFs, there's some flat flexes, probably going after something like an MCPCB or something under there. I'm not completely tearing these things down the way uh, Connor Wolf did because obviously I need to use these. But um, they have flat flexes, whereas other these type of lamps use uh, wires. But they're probably just doing that because they have uh, the two separate circuits. But you can see that there's a red uh, positive, red negative, and blue positive, blue negative. So each LED is being driven, or each string of LEDs is being driven separately. They aren't um, just all being driven in one uh, series string. So it'd be probably interesting to see the driver circuitry in one of these, but um, I'm going to leave that to a um, party who's more financially well endowed than I am. Um, then these are some other Philips LED lamps. This is an 8 watt one, and this is an older version of the 12 and a half watt one, the one that I kind of wolfed at a teardown of. That just had uh, three LEDs. These older versions have six per lobe. Um, the reason for that is when these were developed about three years ago, um, first started seeing these on the market in about 2010, although over here they were 40 bucks a piece. Um, I've heard from uh, lamp collectors over in uh, Europe um, that in places like Sweden um, and Scandinavia, the uh, these sold for the 230 volt versions of these over there sold for about 
um, the equivalent of over a hundred bucks a piece, and from and uh, in England they were about sixty pounds, which probably about ninety eighty to ninety bucks a lamp, so pretty expensive. Uh, now they're about eighteen bucks and change, at least the um, the the three LED ones. This this one is from um, June two thousand eleven. It's a it's the older version of this. Um, the reason for but anyways, the reason for the six LEDs is that. The efficiency of an probably shouldn't be poking that because those um, Luxian Rebels are silicon or sil silicone encapsulated. And don't want to stab them and kill them. But anyways, um, um, the reason for that is because LEDs are more efficient the lighter they're driven. And so the idea is is that driving each of these at only about half a watt or 600 milliwatts or change in this factoring the losses in the driver, um, it made the LEDs more efficient. Now. Um, these guys are good up to, I think, about 3 watts or so. The maximum forward current is about an ampere, so that'd be about 3.5 watts or so. But that's the absolute maximum rating for the for the LED. Um, uh, anyways, um, the idea was is that driving them at only 600 milliwatts, about 20% of their um, AMR, uh, in terms of power, is that it made the LEDs a lot more efficient and... These lamps have efficiencies of about 64 lumens per watt or so, factoring in ballast losses. Um, of course, nowadays, um, those Cree LEDs lamps that they came out with, those are low-end 70 odd lumens per watt, approaching close to 90 lumens per watt. And for a lamp that retails for almost 13 bucks, that's kind of driven a shiv in a lot of the LED lighting industry. But anyways, uh, the idea is, is that that substantially improved the the um, efficiency of the lamp over just driving these at um, the say a watt or more um, of course also that uh, means that they ran cooler and improved the lifetime of the lamp although this thing at least given the emissivity of this material I don't know if my um, infrared thermo thermometer measurements are very accurate but I'm using cheap thermometers because I'm poor but um, uh, these the uh, at least the interlobe temperature is 150 odd degrees Fahrenheit in operation in free air at normal indoor ambient temperatures. Of course, nowadays, I don't know whether it's a combination of improved LED efficiency because there have been all kinds of Moore's Law related crap and improving the efficiency of LED dyes in the past two years, but um, or whether or not it's just they're economizing and being cheap by only by having the number of uh, LEDs per lamp, but um, modern ones have three LEDs um, in the uh, counterwolf territory, and you can see that. And there's this one, which uses the same principles, the remote phosphorine crap, but uh, this is the 8 watt one. This just has uh, two LEDs per lobe. And this one is. Um, is it code? Uh, 1J. That'd be September 2011. There's the MC PCB with crap ton of thermal vibes there. But, um, um, anyways, the, um, by the way, as, a, as, a, as an aside, if you're not familiar with it, this, the Phillips date code system, can, there's a, um, a two character code on the lamp, one letter and one number. The number will be zero to nine inclusive, that being the, um, year of manufacture, like, 1991, 2001, 2011, etc., etc. The J, or, or the the letter, is the month. Um, uh, A through M, excluding um, I, because of the confusion with one, although I have seen some Chinese lamps, uh, Philips lamps that use the I, because they're going to made in China. But, um, that is just, um, A is... January, M is December, you can probably figure out the rest. Um, one last interesting lamp is this one. It's a Utilitech Pro 16-watt uh, lamp. This makes use of uh, eight LEDs. They look a lot like Luxian Rebels, except that little black spot, which I don't know if that's a protection diode or something, uh, looks a bit different. So these might be a different generation of Luxian Rebels, or they could be a different manufacturer manufacturing them under a license or it could just be a blatant ripoff. I think that was possible. Mounted on one metal core printed circuit board with a with an airflow chamber 
or there's a there's an airflow channel so that the air can flow <coughs> through the heat sink. You can see the light there up through the center of the lamp. And of course, the LEDs are normally covered by this um, Zamac alloy, uh, zinc, aluminum, magnesium, copper. That's just held on by a single screw. That just has a plastic, um, that's this little plastic uh, spacing, I think, also reflector, and the uh, phosphor lobe. Although this one, there is a bit of blue light visible through this um, center space when the lamp is in operation. Now, with one side, this is a, a no longer commercially available lamp, but this is um, an earlier version of this lamp here. This I'm not going to do open this up because I can't do that non-destructively, and you can't get these anymore. I'm trying to save this for historical purposes, and I will occasionally use it. But that you can see that white, th that that yellow thing in there that just has a phosphor dome covering an, a metal core printed circuit board with seven um, LEDs on it. You can see a video of one of these things, or. or Pictures of these opened up on a um, James Hooker's website, um, lamptech.co.uk, in the semiconductor light sources section. I just random printed crap on it, and uh, China, blah, 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 blah. There's a factory code. Oh, there's this. Um, 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 April 2011. See this one, instead of using a Zamac alloy or occasionally aluminum, but usually Zamac alloy is used as it doesn't trash the casting dies. Um, this one makes use of a graphite loaded plastic um, for these uh, heat sink fins and the casing of the driver circuit. There's just a driver in all these lamps. It's just quick encased in potting compound, which is basically tearing things down kind of a pain. But, um, that, um, of course, also I don't know if Zamac alloy had been coming to common use at the time these things were made, or well, there might have been things around it, but the actual plastic in there, you can see I've scraped away a bit of the paint, is black, and over in Europe, um, they did release some versions of this where the, where the, um, plastic was actually unpainted, which actually has a slight advantage as far as cooling is the black is slightly better at radiating heat than this white although at the temperatures that this operates some um, convection and uh, just conduction to the air is uh, I think which as far as I know the uh, dominant um, heat loss mechanism but anyway that's just a random tidbit of stuff and as a random experiment, I checked, and yes, the um, phosphor lobe on the L Prize lamp, which is that one if I didn't mention, mention it, uh, before it does fit on the um, non L Prize variants. And it does produce a um, whitish light, but it seems to be very bluish gray. Obviously, the phosphor is designed for the extra red emission of the um, red LEDs. See, that's kind of. Here's a little white bouncing on it, but that's the um, L prize lobe, that's the normal lobe. 